The lost technologies of ancient gods, traces of tools with unknown origins, origins that cannot be comprehended even by a certified locksmith armed with his trusty Bosch cordless drill. Do you really think there's anything new in this kind of statement? Forget about it. Certain out-of-place artifacts have been generating fairy tales for more than a hundred years now. So, what exactly does out-of-place artifact mean anyway? Well, these are such archaeological finds that allegedly prove that ancient history was quite a bit different from what we used to think. Why? Since such advanced, cool stuff couldn't be produced by those degenerates. Yeah, you know, ancient Egyptians, Sumerians, Mayans. Maya. This is considering their laughable level of technological advancement that official historians are rubbing your face in. This kind of rim? With no welding? Well, I am sorry, but who exactly did a wheel alignment for them? Hmm. Perfect symmetry. And proportions? I say, a snug fit inside Pythagorean pentacle. Hmm, I am wondering where they downloaded 3D model for its tip. And what about a wooden handle for it? eBay? <laughs> a good example of such an artifact is the so-called core sample number seven. Pyramidiots are especially thrilled by it, a red granite cylinder that was found in Giza more than a hundred years ago by a famous Egyptologist, Sir Flinders Petrie. Where did these core samples come from exactly? Expert archaeologists believe that they occur if the stone is drilled with a tube or pipe while adding some abrasive. It gradually drills into a stone while producing a circular notch with a core in the middle. When the drill job is finished, the core is knocked out by a wedge and thrown away. So, to be clear, it's nothing more than just industrial waste. A significant quantity of such core samples are constantly discovered by archaeologists. For example, here. These were found by Russian archaeologists who work on the excavation of an ancient workshop in Egypt. Specific location, Kom Tuman. So, what was the purpose of all this drilling? In the case of this ancient workshop, core samples were left behind after the stone vase's cavity was drilled out. A vase? Was there anything else? Yes. For example, that's how the hubs for gate access were produced in Egyptian temples. Also, the same approach was used for sarcophagi groove drilling, as well as eyes and statues. <laughs> but what kind of material is needed to drill a stone? It must certainly be a very hard drill. A diamond or uh, maybe a tungsten carbide. In fact, it's not really a necessity, as in this case we use additional abrasive, such as silica sand or corundrum. The drill bit itself can be made of some soft metal like copper. You see, it's not the copper that drills, but the abrasive particles. Jolly good! <laughs> but has someone proved this? Actually, yes, and repeatedly. Similar experiments were performed by Egyptologist Denis Stocks and Russian experimentalist Nikolai Vasyutin. Heck, even I did personally. Also, our channel's pride and joy, Olga Vdovina. She was able to achieve this by using a cow bone. And that's how the drill bit grins in. Works just like that. So, no miracles here. Exactly, no miracles. Your primitive drilling simply cannot repeat a famous core samples number seven. What's so special about the renowned core sample number seven? From the first glance, nothing in particular. But Flinders Petrie managed to convince himself and others that there is something special about it. The scientist recognized spiral thread grooves on its surface. These thread grooves were continuous for a few full turns around the core sample. At the same time, according to Petrie, the thread step is always the same, 2.5 millimeters with a deviation of no more than 0.25 millimeters. His conclusion was that these grooves were left by a really tough tool, some sort of a chisel capable of carving granite at amazing speed. 
Well, frankly, there are no such chisels capable of carving 2.5 millimeters of granite in a single turn available at our disposal, even in the 21st century. Since then, core sample number 7 was and is actively used by quasi-scientists. Apparently, this is the direct proof that ancient Egypt had much more advanced technology than we do today. Sample number 7 was taken on board by both Western and Eastern pyramidians. Ah, uh, uh, perfect grooves! Just some of the hardest materials on Earth. Except that they're conic and they feature grooves that so far nobody has explained or reproduced. It had uh, a spiral groove a spiral groove that goes around core number seven. Each groove means that the penetration rate was likely two to three millimeters per revolution. That is an impossible feed rate. Uh, it seemed like a rough, ready uh, process uh, to pop a hole in, in granite as fast as you can. That the penetration rate is 500 times more efficient than a 21st century drill. Причём параметры инструмента в сотни и даже в тысячи раз превосходили лучшие станки не только времён Петри, но и современные. There are many videos online dedicated to ancient high tech. Usually there are some smart looking experts debating how exactly the speedy granite drilling was performed. Maybe some high power ultrasound emitter? Hypervortex field rotor? Oh, come on. No way. Neutron plasma cutter? Oh, really? Ah, this sounds very likely. This really is the elephant in the room when it comes to evidence for ancient high technology. The technology is far more advanced than what we have. Значит, была какая-то совсем другая, высоко развитая цивилизация. Lots of evidence of lost ancient high technology. The evidence for the high technology. But what if the grooves are not perfect? Oh, don't be silly, my boy. These perfect grooves are constantly mentioned in the comment section of our videos. Also, our friends are very often blocked when they try to leave comments and share links to our experiments under various ancient high-tech type YouTube channels. Shall we try to give this core sample number 7 a careful look? <laughs> you bloody genius! The only problem is that core sample number 7 is currently stored in Petrie's museum in London, behind some glass too, so not so easy for the random enthusiast to take a close look at it. That was mainly the reason why all stories about this unbelievable core sample were supported by Petrie's references alone. It's hard to believe that no one attempted to verify that the famous Egyptologist's findings were indeed accurate. The only kind of proof supplied was usually the core sample's photo alone. And yes, indeed, you could just about see some grooves in it. No, you forgot about Christopher Dunn's research. All oh, right. How could I? A famous figure in alternative history groups. Engineer. An engineer and independent researcher. Christopher Dunn has personally examined a well-known artifact and was convinced of the authenticity of Petrie's findings. At least, that's what he said. Why would an honest-to-God researcher be lying? Mr. Dunn examined the core sample under a microscope. Yes, it's a clear fact. Also, he wrapped a thread around the core sample, and it was indeed following spiral grooves. It is time for you, officials, to accept your defeat. Nevertheless, Mr. Dunn also discovered that the spiral grooves have some ruptures. The same was mentioned by Flinders Petrie himself. It was only possible to track five full turns around the core sample. Expectedly enough, Christopher Dunn wanted more proof. So in the year 2003, he managed to get a latex mold of the core number seven. Then the mold was used to make a swept shape of the sample. And again, Mr. Dunn was convinced that spiral grooves cover the entire core sample, with periodical ruptures along the way. That's proof, isn't it? What else do you actually require? Let's be honest. If you look carefully at the latex mold photo, it's not exactly convincing, is it? 
Do you really recognize a pattern in this chaos? And how about the thread trick? Nikolai Vasyutin attempted to use the core sample from his own experiment to recreate it. Look, the thread spirals around the core sample in a clockwise direction. And now, anti-clockwise. It seems that the thread only obeys the will of the one holding it, and not the direction of grooves. It would be sensible to take high-res photos and use them to produce a panoramic composite of the core sample. This kind of composite would clearly show what grooves we're dealing with. Are they spiral, ring, or some other type? Luckily, we were able to do so. On the 2nd of March 2020, I got a wonderful birthday present from our British friends. High-resolution photos of core sample number 7 from all angles. These were then used to produce a 360-degree panoramic composite. The very first thing we did was to compare the panoramic composite of core sample number 7 with the resulted core samples of other modern experiments. I have to officially admit, the comparison showed that, so far, we've not been able to achieve the level of quality available in ancient Egypt. Just look at it yourself. Here is our sample, and here's the ancient one. The difference is obvious. The ancient core sample has much sharper, smoother, and deeper grooves. You see, modern technologies are clearly far behind the ancient craftsmanship, and maybe we will never even reach them. <laughs>
how exactly was Christopher Dunn able to wrap a thread around this? And what did Sir Flanders Petrie measure? Frankly, it's not entirely clear what pyramidians are still excited about. Some magic drill capable of carving two millimeters of granite in a single turn. All these questions are rhetorical. Well, let's clarify where these grooves in the sample core really come from. The thing is, these grooves have nothing to do with the drilling speed itself. Here's what happens. Abrasive material particles fall into the gap between the drill bit and the core sample. Then the pressure is applied on them, and first tiny grooves are formed. These are then straightaway filled with more abrasive particles and widened. If the grade of abrasive material is low, meaning a relatively small number of abrasive particles, these will continue to fill the nearest grooves. This is how you get a series of grooves that are located at a relatively equal distance from each other. All these statements are verified by our own practical experiments. If the amount and the grade of abrasive material are kept high at all times, you will not get any grooves at all. So both the core sample and walls of the drill hole stay smooth. Well, you have to admit, yet another pyramidiates fetish turned out to be a myth. And why were we misinformed for more than 100 years on this topic? Conspiracy! Arranged by archaeologists! No, I think the root cause is rather different. There are a number of factors that probably gave birth to this myth. Difficulties with the access to the artifact. We tend to believe any information presented by a confident narrator's voice. Nobody has explained or reproduced. Sir Flinders Petrie's authority. But we shouldn't forget that even the best scientists still make mistakes. The famous myth of core sample number seven couldn't pass even the simplest of tests. I will repeat again. Core sample grooves do not form spiral threads. These spiral threads are not continuous. They break, interrupt, and split. The distance between grooves fluctuates up to three times line to line. Modern experiments performed by our team produced similarly looking core samples. The conclusion is, all extraordinary statements must be checked and rechecked, even if they are made by such an outstanding and respectable scientist as Sir Flinders Petrie. My dear friends, your comments, Patreon subscription, and likes are very much appreciated. I would like to express my gratitude to Vladislav Dragunov for his video editing skills, Nikolai Vasyutin and Olga Vdovina for all the knowledge and experience shared with us, George Sokolov for his help with this video recording, Pavel Selivanov analysis, and Timur Nizov for his animation skills. A special thanks to the Petries Museum for supporting our project. Yours, Alexander Sokolov. The downfall of official science. Выключай. <coughs> 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 <coughs>